Sir Alan Chan, who has held many key appointments in Singapore's public service, followed by 15 years of experience leading Singapore Press Holdings. And he currently serves as the chairman of Land Transport Authority. And he was trained uh, as an aeronautical engineer at Eco uh, Nationale de l'Aviation Civile, otherwise known as ANAC. I suppose we'll be hearing a few anecdotes about there. And then he also obtained an MBA at the French Business School in Sead. So we will have a short Q&A session at the end of the lecture. Uh, you can feel free to type your questions via the chat function that we have on Zoom. Uh, but before Alan shares his uh, incredibly rich experience with us today, I would like to introduce His Excellency, French Ambassador Marc Abonsour, to open the events with a few words. Monsieur l'Ambassadeur, s'il vous plaît. Merci beaucoup. Uh, cher Alan Chan, Kevin Cho, uh, Sylvie Kwok, uh, I'm really delighted, I mean, uh, to uh, open this uh, inaugural lecture of a uh, French alumni Singapore lecture series. Uh, just a second, because I have an echo. Is it okay? Yeah. So it's a, a new series uh, which will uh, feature the most uh, eminent Singaporeans who made the choice to uh, study in France and who now occupy uh, leading positions in Singapore, uh, whether in industry, uh, academia, or uh, government. And what is uh, the most interesting for us is also to understand, I mean, uh, their friends' experience, why they made that choice, and uh, how this, uh, as you said, I mean, this uh, choice shaped their career. Uh, and what they did uh, take away, I mean, from their stay in France, uh, uh, of course, professionally speaking, but not only, also intellectually uh, speaking, and, uh, and to share with us about their experience. Uh, the starting point is also that uh, the, um, you are, I mean, as uh, uh, alumni, uh, the best ambassadors for the education uh, in France. Uh, you are in Singapore, I mean, those who know uh, the best uh, about uh, French education system, but also about France uh, in general. And, uh, and you are... Uh, key actors, I mean, of the collaboration between our two uh, countries. So this is the reason why, I mean, the French embassy uh, decided to, through this uh, series of lectures, I mean, to pay tribute uh, to uh, you and, and your very uh, positive, constructive uh, role to uh, uh, the partnership between our two countries, uh, but also to seize this opportunity, I mean, to uh, boost uh, France uh, Singapore alumni uh, network, and hopefully also uh, to uh, generate, I mean, new collaborations and, and new uh, partnerships in the different uh, sectors uh, of uh, the, the collaboration between France and, and Singapore. And, and so for this uh, uh, objective, we thought that uh, this inaugural uh, lecture uh, should be part of Voila, uh, Voila 2020. Uh, so let me just remind you a few uh, elements about uh, this uh, edition of Voila, which will end the 22nd of November. Uh, this year we have a lineup of uh, 50 uh, programs covering uh, culture, arts, uh, but not only. We have also uh, programs related to education as uh, today, science, uh, sports, and, and many other uh, events. Uh, we thought that uh, this year was particularly interesting because uh, through Voila, we want to convey a message, a message of resilience, uh, but also a message of uh, how we can promote together some uh, innovation. And, and you will see that through uh, Voila, we will experiment a new format, a new way uh, to uh, stage events and so on. And lastly, it's also a message of friendship. Uh, we started with the uh, 100th anniversary of uh, Clemenceau's visit to Singapore, but it's also the 55th anniversary of the establishment of our diplomatic uh, relation. So uh, during this festival, we will have, of course, uh, one uh, important event on uh, study in France, uh, which is the online uh, Choose France Education and Career Fair, which will be from the 17th 
uh, to the 21st of November. And it's an event online, uh, which will provide opportunities, I mean, to meet with a representative from 37 uh, French universities and Grandes Écoles. And I'm sure that uh, uh, Alan, I mean, Kevin and Sylvie can tell you more about what is Grande Ecole. Uh, through their own uh, experience. So we will have uh, Polytechnique, Sciences Po, uh, ESSEC, uh, INSEAD, uh, among uh, others. And what is very interesting as well, uh, it's that many French companies who have set up uh, regional headquarters here in Singapore will also participate. Among them, you have Alcatel, Lucent, Atos, Biomérieux, Essilor, LVMH, Naval Group, ST Micro, Ubisoft, uh, I'm sure Thales also uh, will, will participate now. You have no choice but to participate. And uh, the French Tech, which is the network of French startups. And, and it's a very uh, dynamic uh, network now. We have over, over 1,000 members uh, contributing to the French Tech uh, Singapore. So I stop here, but I wanted to uh, uh, say uh, that I'm extremely, I mean, grateful to uh, Alan uh, Chan, I mean, to be our speaker uh, today and to kick off, I mean, this uh, new series of lecture. Uh, Alan Chan has always been, I mean, an extremely precious uh, partner uh, for France-Singapore uh, uh, partnership. And I also wanted, I mean, to thank uh, Kevin Cho uh, for being with us and, and France uh, Alumni Association. Thank you very much. And I, I wish you a, a very good discussion. Well, thank you very much, Your Excellency. So next up, uh, we have Mr. Kevin Chow, the Vice President of French Alumni Singapore and CEO of Thales in Singapore, and he will be making a few opening remarks. Kevin, please. Hi. Um, hello, everyone, and uh, thank you all for joining us this uh, afternoon for this uh, inaugural lecture. Uh, on behalf of the French Alumni Singapore, uh, I'd like to thank uh, Mr. Alan Chan, our guest speaker, for being here today to share your story. Uh, we're all looking forward to hear this and uh, how your time in France shaped your perspectives uh, and your career. Uh, the French alumni would also like to thank um, the Department for Culture, Education and Science at the French Embassy, as well as personally, uh, His Excellency Ambassador Marc uh, Amonsour for your strong support and collaboration. Uh, we, we do um, appreciate this uh, uh, precious um, uh, collaboration that we have. Um, for those of you who have not heard of us, um, French alumni is an association of uh, people in Singapore with a connection to France. Uh, for example, um, you know, we could have been educated there or we spent a part of our career there. We currently have about 100 um, full members and about 200 associate members who join us regularly for social and uh, business networking activities. Um, this year, interestingly, the French alumni is um, celebrating our 40th anniversary. So we're 40 years old and this directly reflects um, the close and long-standing partnership between the two countries. Um, some of you know that March 2019 was a conclusion of the French uh, Singapore Year of um, uh, Innovation. Uh, Ambassador was, was very busy uh, with, with that year, a lot of exchanges. Um, we do believe that that kind of laid the, the framework for the future. Uh, we not only celebrated our close bilateral ties, but it also served as a springboard to do more, expanding collaborations in trade, science, technology, education, defense, the list goes on. So moving forward, we believe that the close ties will continue to deepen and broaden. And uh, we at the French Alumni hope to be there to support this process. Um, and we hope to do so for all our members across um, the age uh, spectrum. So we've seen in recent years, uh, Compus France has been very successful and uh, we've seen more students in, in exchanges, double degree programs uh, between the Singapore U's and the prestigious um, uh, French uh, Grandes Écoles. Um, many young professionals are also enrolled in French business schools, uh, either directly in France or in, in the Singapore campuses. So one of the French alumni objectives is really to provide a network uh, for these young, young people. They can meet others who've gone through, been there, done that, and hopefully they can learn what to expect. They can also hear about professional opportunities uh, from our more experienced members and uh, from our collaboration with the French Chamber of Commerce uh, in Singapore, where by the way, I've had the honor of serving as a board member since uh, 2016. Um, in in the, their professional lives, our alumni members are very active in uh, different areas, including science and tech, finance, education, public sector. Um, so we at the French Alumni, we see us uh, really bringing this diverse group of people together and allowing us to upkeep our, our French ties. It could be something as simple as having uh, other, you know, as we say, francophone 
of francophiles to uh, to speak with and to reminisce about our shared experience in France or attending more formal cultural uh, or even diplomatic events. We believe that such a network of um, uh, professionals will facilitate the exchange of ideas and really create opportunities for um, personal networking and, and, and growth. Um, the seniors are also valued members of our French uh, alumni. Many of them keep uh, close ties to, to France and have a wealth of knowledge uh, and contacts that can benefit our younger members. So we certainly want to keep them engaged in our French alumni activities. So working closely with um, our friends at the French uh, embassy, our association will continue to um, participate in, organize social and cultural activities to boost the, the love that we all share for the French uh, language, art, history. And of course, the most important thing to us Singaporeans, food, la cuisine française. Talking about it already makes me uh, quite hungry, uh, Chairman. Um, <laughs> To sum up, I hope this conclusion, this introduction of um, the French Alumni Singapore has given everybody a brief um, idea of what, what we do, who we are. I, I'd like to thank you all for tuning in today. And uh, for those of you who are watching uh, the recorded version, uh, thanks for uh, tuning in offline. So I'd like to pass the time over to uh, Chairman Allen, one of our uh, association's most distinguished members and also um, the founding team um, I'm looking forward to hear your story, um, uh, Ellen, about uh, about your life in France. So over to you. Thank you very much. Well, thank you very much, uh, Kevin. So now, without further ado, we have the star of our lecture today, Mr. Alan Chan, please. Thank you. Monsieur Ambassador Marc Abancou, les amis de French alumni, messieurs dames. Tout d'abord, je voudrais remercier l'alumni français et l'ambassade de France pour m'inviter à donner le premier discours d'alumni. Je suis très honoré par cette invitation. Il y a presque 50 ans, mon Dieu, 50 ans, que j'ai fait ma rencontre avec le monde francophone. Dans ces vingtaines de minutes, je vais vous partager mon expérience et les petites histoires que j'ai eues en France et avec des gens français. Et maintenant, je vais parler en anglais. Getting started. To many Singaporeans, France is a country famed for its paintings, grand architecture, impressionist music, high fashion, and as Kevin said, fantastic cuisine. In 1971, I was among four A-level students who were offered engineering scholarship in France. That began Singapore's long association with French technology. For the younger generation, you have to appreciate that in 1971, Singapore was only six years old. We were a young nation and highly dependent on developmental aid from advanced countries. Singapore students naturally gravitated to English speaking countries like Britain, Australia, Canada, New Zealand for their studies. But France made a special gesture to Singapore in 1971. They came forward and offered assistance. It began with four scholarships a year and it actually reached a zenith of about 25 scholarships a year by the late 70s. Now, in the midst of our JC2, or we call it pre 2 at that time, my pal Mokpong Wing and I got a phone call from the Public Service Commission and we were asked to appear at the Secretariat and told that following the interviews, we were selected to study in France. We literally asked, why us, you know? We, we didn't want to go to France, but why are you catching us to go to France? Now, the officer who was seeing us happened to be my old neighbor, so he was quite frank with us. And he said, well, you two guys are quite uh, outspoken. Uh, in a sense, you're, you guys are loud mouths. You know? And the commission wanted active fellows who are able to navigate through the uh, alien system of France. If you take a very, reclusive fellow, he will probably suffer. That's why you guys were selected. So that's how Mock and I ended up in France. 
Now, but I still hasn't made my decision and I consulted my cousin who is a British trained engineer. He was, at the time that he, was, he built actually the DBS building in Robinson Road. I asked him, you know, Jimmy, should I accept this offer? And his answer was yes, yes, and yes. I, I was quite taken aback. And he said, you know, Alan, even though I studied in London, but we actually look at France as a country that is very advanced in technology. There is actually much to learn from them. And he cited the Suez Canal, the Eiffel Tower, the Mirage fighter jet, and the world's first supersonic uh, passenger liner, the Concorde jet. He said, look, all these are stuff from France. If you have a chance, go. So that was how I took a yes and I accepted the French scholarship. Now, over the years, besides training Singapore scholars like many of us, France also developed the France Singapore Institute of Electrotechnology. And this was followed by the establishment of the INSEAD and the ESSEC campuses in Singapore. Today, as you have heard from Kevin, we have a reservoir of French trained Singaporeans in the field of engineering, business and economics, political science, music and the arts, French language, and also medicine. One of my, my personal physician was actually right now in Singapore, a, a professor in Changi General Hospital. He was trained in France. Now, studying in France, arriving in Paris on a cold autumn day in September, 1972, we caught an overnight train to the seaside resort of Guayon. We spent nine months learning French in the Saint de Long de Guayon otherwise known as Carrel. Now the unique pedagogy of Carrel was the absence of written words. We learn French only from hearing and speaking, like in a mother-child relationship. This was to ensure that our French pronunciation was not distorted by our own interpretation of the printed word. It was only at the intensive summer course, which I underwent in a Kong in Normandy that we did comprehension and composition. We had to listen to uh, recorded passages on the tape and jot down the main points and then answer comprehension questions. To me, this was as if we were taking notes in a lecture. Now the French education system. It was in Carrel that we met a French engineer who was studying uh, German there. And because he went to Cornell for his master's, he spoke good English. And he sat us down one evening to explain the French education system to us because we really knew nothing. We were just there learning French. And he told us, guys, instead of going to a university for a three-year engineering course like in Britain, we have to go back to the high school. We have to go back to the lycée for two years of cl class preparatoire. Uh, we are not going to repeat the baccalaureate. We are going to do what in Singapore term would be JC3 and JC4. So two extra years in the JC, but at advanced level. And we then had to take the Kongku or the entrance exam to the Grand Zekong. And admission is not guaranteed. At that time, in, uh, when I took the Kongku in 1975, there were 10,000 candidates in the whole of France, and there were only 3,000 places. And in fact, when we took the exams, we had to cover our names. So the markers don't know who, who we were. And we had to compete on equal terms with uh, the French candidates. And in fact, we Singaporeans were disadvantaged. The French have a system whereby um, in the class preparatoire, it's called toi de me, sang de me, and set de me. That means if you take the uh, concours for the first time in your life, you are a toi de me, you are given 40 extra points. If you're taking it for the second time, it's uh, 20 extra points. And if you're taking it for the third time, zero points, extra points for your exams. And whether you are a trois de mille or saying de mille wasn't based on uh, when you took the exam, it was based on age. And because we spent one extra year learning French, 
all Singaporeans were considered sanguine, and we just lost 20 points for the entrance exam. It was tough. And uh, it was really a big shock to all of us. Uh, instead of a four year stint in France, it would be a minimum of six years with a high chance of failure. As we were already deep in French water, we had no choice, but we will fight on. There was no turning back. Unfortunately, my problem wasn't over. Cruz, the uh, scholarship office, was only able to find two places in a class preparatoire for two of my comrades, Chan Wing Kyung and Go Ken Hui. For Mok and myself, they found nothing. And they just told us, you two fellas just go to the faculty and do science, do physics, do mathematics, whatever. And we said, how can that be? We, we just couldn't accept it. And um, Mok and I actually plowed through the library, the press, you know, the uh, bookshop, searching through the career guides. And we actually found a private engineering college in Paris, Echo Special de Travel Public, which offered a class preparatoire. The tuition fee was 20,000 francs a year. Very, very expensive. For a normal state grand school, uh, lycée, the tuition is free, zero. But this one charges 20. So we were actually in a class of rich boys and uh, rather lazier, if I may say. Life wasn't too difficult because, you know, I was with a bunch of rich kids. And we learned to play bridge, we went to cinemas, we went to exhibition. At the end of the first year of class preparatoire, the professor called Mock and I apart and said, hey, you boys, you are too good for this school. You should go to a lycée and prepare for the better schools. But we said, nobody wanted us. And he said, trust me, I will write you guys letters of recommendation. And that's how both of us transferred to the uh, Lycée Cano in Dijon. And that's where I learned to drink a lot of uh, burgundy wines. Now the class preparatoire in the Lycée was sheer hell. We had to cover the equivalent of a three-year BSc, Bachelor's of Science program in two years. In addition, we had to study French literature and philosophy, English and engineering drawing. There were weekly vivas, or in French they call it col. Um, every, every, once a week in the evening, we have to face a professor for one hour and we have to explain scientific theories and answer questions which we draw from a ballot, solve the problems with him every one evening a week. That, that was the kind of preparation. And weekend assignments were to complete complete past concours papers. And since we had an easy life in France, in Paris on the first year, we had to work doubly hard to make up for lost time. Four hours sleep per night was considered normal. We, all of us, five, four of us, took an average of five concours each for different groups of uh, grands écoles. June was for written exams and written Results only constituted 40% of the general grade. July was for vivas, which covered 60% of the grades. And when you go for a viva, the prof will pull out uh, 10 envelopes like in a fan. You pull one out and you have to answer it on the blackboard. In 1975, all four of us passed. It was a relief. Three of us got into aeronautical engineering while Mock went to do civil engineering. Once in the Grands Accord, life was easier. The school was well endowed and we were exposed to the latest in technology. Go and myself were in the Ecole Nationale de l'Aviation Civile, which had its own fleet of training and even passenger aircraft. We had a classroom on board a Caravelle jet and we flew to different parts of Europe. And for the graduating class, we were even treated to a study trip, a voyage they took to Mexico. So we were in, in French, they would say, we were vraiment gâté, we were really well treated. 
Now, my French experience. I found my experience in France to be unique. It was an enriching exposure that I would never have gone through in an English speaking country. By making French engineering students study literature, philosophy, and political science, we had a much better view of the world at large. As an example, we did Jean-Jacques Rousseau's The Social Contract, which helped us appreciate the political aspects of society. We also studied the Comedy Humans series of literature books by Honoré de Balzac, and the book that really killed me was the surrealistic novel Nadja by André Breton. And we were saying, gosh, what is this engineering student studying about dreams? But, you know, in the end, in real life, we have to learn how to dream. The system of vivers train us to explain concepts and calculations in clear terms. This was particularly useful for engineers who had to direct teams to execute projects. In the Grand Zécole, we had to cover some 20 to 30 subjects per year. In fact, some of my other friends said, no, that, Alan, no, that, why are you doing 20, 30 subjects a year? I said, it was to build up our knowledge base to undertake multidisciplinary projects. This is what I call the polyvalent education that is France is famous for. It was very, very broad based. Professional experience. On this score, I'm proud to cite five graduates of my alma mater, ENAC, who have achieved top management positions in Singapore. Besides myself, there's Huang Hongping, who was deputy group CEO of the FNN Group, Te Lim Hock who is the Group Chief Operating Officer in GIC. Li Ling Wei is the Deputy Group CEO of SMRT. And of course, Kevin Chow, the CEO of Thales Singapore. Although all four, five of us were trained as aeronautical engineers, we were able to adapt to different sectors, be it media, beverages, investments, trains or electronics. Vers versatility is really the hallmark of a French graduate. Now on French-Singapore relationship, I would like to describe an anecdote on the friendship of the late Minister Mentor Li Kuan Yew and the late President Jacques Chirac. I was Mr. Li's principal private secretary in 1997 and were and we were preparing for a trip to Paris. At that time, President Chirac's conservative allies lost the legislative elections to the socialists. That began a period of cohabitation with Prime Minister Lionel Jospin. Mr. Lee wanted a gift to cheer up President Chirac. And after pondering for a couple of weeks, we settled on Liu Kang's Chinese calligraphy. Liu Kang is a very famous Chinese artist, father of Liu Tai Ke. We settled on Liu Kang's Chinese calligraphy for President Shira, who is a well-known Chinese scholar and a lover of Chinese art. The passage, Sai Yong Shi Ma, Yan Zi Fei Fu, that was the calligraphy we gave to President Shira. And the passage means misfortune may be an actual blessing. I must add that five years later in 2002, President Chirac won the landslide presidential election with 82% of the vote in the second round. I think we found a most appropriate gift for President Chirac five years earlier. Because of the extraordinary friendship between the two great men, President Chirac conferred many advantages for Singapore. This includes allowing our Republic of Singapore Air Force to train in the French airspace. In fact, at that time, I actually I accompanied PM 
Go Chok Tong to, to inaugurate the base. We were the only foreign air force who were allowed to fly in French airspace. It was an extraordinary concession for Singapore. And President Chirac also made a second excellent gesture. He actually allowed NUS engineering students to gain direct entry into Echo Polytechnic and Echo Central. For us, we worked like, like devils to, to pass the Kung Fu. And now there's this special scheme for Singapore students to gain direct entry. Anyway, this special program is in fact administered by one of our alumni members, Dr. Lim Kabin. But I must say maybe with a bit of uh, pride that actually our NUS students had a lot of difficulties because you really had to be uh, tortured in the class preparatoire before you can go in and take on. The NUS preparation, in my view, wasn't good enough. Now, let me talk on uh, French connections. My exposure to the Francophile, Francophone world was extremely useful. When I was a permanent secretary of the Ministry of Transport in the early 2000s, I went to the International Civil Aviation Organization headquarters, IKO, in Montreal to lobby for Singapore's election to the council. The moment I stepped in the foyer of uh, the IKO HQ, a bunch of African ambassadors looked at me and said, Shan, qu'est-ce que to, uh, in non-polite term, qu'est-ce que to foot DC? It means what the hell are you doing here? Now, all these guys were with me in Enna, and uh, we had spent many weekends together drinking beer, drinking wine, because the peculiarity of the French is that the French students actually go home to their wherever, to Paris, to Brest, to, to uh, Strasbourg for their weekend. But we foreign students just hang around in the hostel. And they were all my buddies. Getting a vote from them was almost a given. When I paid a courtesy call on the French ambassador to IKEA, well, he wasn't from the aeronautical world. He was just assigned from K. Dorsey. He was rather skeptical of Singapore's request. Hmm, what is this country, Singapore, trying to get a, a council position? However, his view changed when I told him that the Singapore Air Force, as I said, operated in uh, Kazo, and we actually had the largest fleet of Super Puma helicopters outside France. We, the, we were the biggest foreign operator of Super Puma helicopters. Our Navy operated six Lafayette class frigates. We had French frigates. And SIA at that time in the early 2000s had over 30 Airbus in its fleet. And it is also the first airline in the world to order the huge size A380. Now, after hearing all the Franco-Singapore cooperation, the French ambassador assured me of support from France, and he would help me persuade the other Francophone countries. Now, from the business perspective, I was happy to run into my INSEAD classmates in, of all places, Peru and Norway, where my company had joint ventures. The fact that we shared the Fontainebleau experience brought us closer, and many business in the past were resolved amicably. So again, French connection counts. Now, in the field of land transport, where I'm now looking after, our major MRT signaling system suppliers include Elstom, Thales, Siemens, and Bombardier. I must add that Elstom took up Singapore's challenge in the 1990s to build the world's first driverless MRT system. And this is in the Northeast line, the first. After they built for Singapore, then they built for Paris. Today, all the MRT lines in Singapore are driverless. And I must add that 
since Elstom is buying up Bombardier Rail, it means that three out of our four MRT signaling systems will be provided by France. Now, I must declare that all this happened well before I became chairman of LTA. It is the prowess of French technology that made LTA select them over other suppliers. All in all, I am grateful for the experience France has given me in my professional training in savoir faire and savoir vivre. Besides working hard, we had, to, we had learned to live well, appreciating the finer points in life. On a personal level, I, I also persuaded my son to take a double degree in political science and French in the university. And in his professional work, he had to deal with business partners from Côte d'Ivoire and Madagascar. You know, a Singaporean having to be plowed into these two countries, his French fluency was most useful. I can say that the Singapore government is appreciative of the difference that a French education can give to a Singapore student. In both the Public Service Commission and LTA where I'm involved, we are encouraging students to pursue their undergraduate and postgraduate studies in France, as well as other non-English speaking countries. Entry into French schools is now made easier with the twinning programs with Singapore and other foreign universities. These courses include engineering, political science, and economics. For you young people out there, you no longer have to go through the ordeal of the concours and you can get into a very good French schools. For the budding students out there, don't miss your chance to experience what I had gone through. You will never regret it. Thank you. Well, thank you very much, uh, Ellen, for uh, sharing because it was definitely very interesting to hear about your adventures in France. Uh, I have to say personally, I did Clepa 35 years after you and we have very similar experiences. So, you know, in my publicity for this event, I put in brackets cheekily uh, saying like, well, you know, what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. <laughs> I'm guessing it, it applies to you also. And uh, definitely it has influenced your personal and professional perspectives. So, so I'm sure quite a few of us uh, watching and listening to you definitely would like to find out more on how your personal and professional perspectives have been influenced by your experience. So Kevin will now lead a short Q&A session. Uh, we also invite our participants to ask their questions online uh, via the chat function on Zoom. So uh, before Kevin begins, we do already have a question from Daisy who asked, uh, how has interest in studying France evolved over the years? Is it still strong and passionate? Should we continue to promote this trend in Singapore despite the pandemic and terrorist fears? And uh, what areas of studies are now a la mode? So the first part, like um, I'm guessing uh, people from Campus Pulse can take that, how it has evolved over the years, still being strong and passionate. I definitely think so. Well, thank you. Well, first I must say, Daisy was the first person I met when I arrived in France. We actually met in the cruise office. So it's really a small world. And, I've known her for many years. Now, the study of French in the secondary school continues to be very popular. It's still what I call a very chic language. And actually, many kids go on to take O levels and A levels in, in French. So that the interest is always there. And in fact, when I interview uh, school leavers for the PSC scholarships, Actually, many of them are already at French, and uh, we can, in fact, send them directly to Sciences Po for the education. As to the numbers of students going to France today, unfortunately, it is small, very small. Unlike the old days when, you know, France gave us X number of scholarship and the PSC had to find people to fill it in, Singapore now is very liberal. 
once you are selected as a scholar, you can go to any college you want to. And unfortunately, our kids would like to take this day out, go to some English speaking country. So that, that's a real challenge. But as I said, the um, stud, I, I can speak for my own field. The study of engineering and science is still very important. That's why you went to do your PhD. And uh, there are many things that European universities are actually ahead of the British universities. And so, you know, we make it a point to send people to study in these uh, places. And even when I was in a PSC and I found a couple of uh, PSC scholars to go to Sciences Po, I was quite happy to find that some of them wanted to specialize. One, one who is a president scholar, mind you, wanted to specialize in African studies. And there was another lady who wanted to do Middle East studies in uh, Sciences Po. And this actually cheered uh, the PSC no end because then at least these students, when they come back to Singapore, can have a different perspective of Africa and the Middle East, get a French perspective. Okay, so Kevin, I'm sure yeah. you have a couple of questions. Yeah, before I ask uh, uh, Chairman Ellen a question, I, I do have to, um, just as an anecdote, um, Chairman, you mentioned that Alstom took up the challenge to do the Northeast Line driverless. Uh, I like to say the, um, the, the core system, the automatic um, uh, train supervision, ATS, uh, and the SCADA system was done by Thales. So um, waving the Thales flag also for the, for the French pavilion. <laughs> okay, this, is, this is called Coco Rico. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Exactly. But um, here's, here's my question for you, um, uh, Chairman. Um, you know, when you, when you were a student in, in, in France, um, I, I think a lot of your peers, um, you know, in terms of thinking and exposure were exposed a lot of views, let's say, in, um, you know, from the UK and from America, uh, from the US. Um, um, what is your perspective on uh, how, how that shaped you in terms of views? You know, you talked about, um, you know, having, having been encouraged to read philosophy and, um, uh, you know, several um, elements of culture. How, how did that uh, change you? Um, uh, fundamentally in Chairman Allen. You know, the other day I was having dinner with the CEO of DSO, who, who is on my LTA board, and it also happened that his wife is my niece. So we were just chatting about um, what I call engineers in general, and he described to me that uh, many engineers whether it's local train or in certain Western countries, they are very good in tasks. When you give them a specific task, you know, build me something or, or resolve this something, they are very good in it. But for him, who is at the forefront of scientific research for Singapore DSO, he said, I prefer people who can just look at something and tell me how to improve it. So it is really coming in from a completely different perspective. You, you have to be much more Cartesian. Look, look at it from me. And I think this is one strength that we have uh, obtained in France. And, and that's why I say, you know, how can this Inak graduate end up uh, managing beer factories? You know? Frankly, all four of us felt that that was the best job that we should have gone to. So, so, so the ability to see through things. I think that that is a strength of our training. Thank you, Chairman. Um, so maybe we'll pick up some of the questions that um, have been um, uh, posted on on the chat. Um, I think some of, um, I think Ahmad was Ahmed Zarif was talking about uh, activities for French alumni. So we certainly uh, Ahmad we're very uh, happy to kind of give you an update offline, but um, uh, post uh, or rather in the new normal. Uh, we are finding uh, our, our foot and um, I think the activities will probably restart in phase three. So we'll definitely come back to you on that one. Um, there's a question, um, I think from, um, let's see, uh, Jean. Um, the, the question is, um, or rather the, the comment is, uh, thank you, Mr. Chan, for your interesting uh, sharing. Um, I just wanted to ask a specific question on the French engineering system. 
um, is there a heavy emphasis on pure science and, and not a lot on engineering compared to the, let's say, the Anglo-Saxon uh, counterparts? Has it uh, disadvantaged you or helped you in, in your career? I think you answered a little bit of that, but I thought this, this uh, is interesting that uh, um, Jean is asking about the focus on the, on the pure science because uh, I think we all went through a bit of, a bit of that in uh, prepa. Uh, Chairman, your perspectives? If I may use the word, actually the French are mathematics mad. You know? Everything is based on mathematics. They, they use mathematics to select their top people. Um, you know, the interesting thing about our French education system until recently, anyone with a baccalaureate can get a place in the university. So you may have an arts baccalaureate, but you can enter the medical school. That, that was the, the French law. And at one stage when I was in uh, Toulouse, the first year medical school, I had 2,000 students. And the second year medical school had 100 places. That means they use mathematics to see out the, the, the students. So mathematics is actually the basis. And frankly, today, even when I deal with uh, derivative traders, oil traders, many of them are French. It's because of their strength in mathematics. But having said that, because I described that in our work, we actually do many, many subjects and we have to synthesize all this knowledge to take on multidisciplinary subjects. So, you know, it's the ability to, to see through different subjects. You see, the strength of the French Grands Ecole is that there are different tiers of Grands Ecole. There are very, very good Grands Ecoles and there are average Grands Ecole and not so good Grands Ecoles. And, if you are in the upper tier of Grand Secours, the, the view is that you are already quite smart. I will introduce you the 101, or let's say um, antennas. You just read up on antenna and we'll give you the lecture, we'll give you the tutorial. After that, you can pick up any antenna book for the rest of your life. Just pick it up, read it, and you'll be able to go through. So that, that is the kind of system that they'll give you the fundamentals and the student is supposed to be smart enough to be able to follow up. So that, that is the kind of French education. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, Jean, I hope that uh, answers your question because uh, I, I certainly share Chairman Allen's uh, view. I think um, our French education has kind of given us the, the, um, the key uh, foundations. And then after that, everything else is just the interpretation of, uh, of the world using those key foundations. And this helped me a, a lot as well. And I like Chihu's point, um, Chihu from DSO, about the fact that I think French trained um, engineers, uh, I've seen some of my French trained um, uh, engineering colleagues um, will say, hey, hey, sorry, we're talking about the wrong problem. Let's restate the problem, right? Let's not solve the wrong pro problem. Whereas I think sometimes as engineers, we want to know the problem statement and just jump straight into to the answer. So thanks very much, um, uh, Chairman, for your perspective. We'll take a couple more questions um, uh, Actually, since uh, time. I'd like Go to ahead. On a to what you just said, because uh, I was trained as an engineer and then I did a science PhD, right? And so I have to say, France, the education system in the Grands Ecoles, the whole engineering diploma d'ingénieur, it actually yeah, it's true that it's not very um, engineering tweaked. Like, for instance, I never did any med lab. But uh, it's more the mindset that they teach us. So every time we receive something, the first thing you ask yourself is, whatever new project it is, as uh, Chairman Ellen Chan said, uh, you have the basis, you have the fundamentals to understand a problem. But then it goes about with a systemic perspective, like what is the problem statement, which is what Kevin mentioned. And then how do I break it into parts? So that's where the engineering kind of uh, mindset comes in. It's not per se the tools of engineering, but it's really the mindset. So I think um, it's definitely not a disadvantage uh, to answer Jean's question. Uh, and it's definitely like it allows people to prioritize very quickly. If this task is good to have, or is it a must have? Do I have time to deal with it or not? So. That's, that's the fundamental difference between scientists and engineers. So, okay, <laughs> that's uh, my experience. Uh, then we'll move on to the next questions, Kevin. So, um, Chairman, there are two questions, I think quite similar. One from, uh, one a comment from uh, uh, Lim Kabin, 
Um, hi, Kabin. And also uh, a question from, uh, from Teddy Lowe. So Kabin's comment uh, is really about scholarships and studying in France. So um, he's encouraging, he's saying, um, uh, perhaps we can consider more scholarships for study in, in France. So that's one. Um, on a related note, I think Teddy is asking, um, you know, young scholars, as, as you were saying, Chairman, don't see um, France as a absolutely natural destination. Um, is there some tweaks needed, let's say, to the um, language elective program? We, we know I, my daughter is also studying French um, in the MOE Foreign Language Centre. Um, could, could we consider tweaking it to, to make um, studying in France more, more attractive? Maybe your perspective from, uh, from the PSE um, head that you wear? Okay, let, let me first state PSE's policy. There is actually no quota on the number of scholarships. We, the, actually, the state is very, very generous. I mean, the Prime Minister literally tells me, Alan, if you can find 150, give 150. Or if you can find 200, give 200. So there are no quota. So in that sense, there has been a lot of talk that, you know, uh, the less well-off kids are deprived of scholarship. This is not true. There are plenty of scholarships, but what the PSC's viewpoint is that, look, if the state is going to spend half a million dollars on Mr. or Ms. X, this person better be worth the half a million bucks. Uh, we don't, don't want just another run of the mill type. We want someone with a different quality and inquisitive mind. So for that, we are prepared to give. And there is actually no quota on countries. Although I must quietly tell you now, the new chairman, uh, Mr. Li Zuyang, is slowly orientating uh, scholars to what I call non-traditional sources, whether it is uh, China, uh, Japan, Germany, France. So we are encouraging them. But at the end of the day, you know, the PSC colleagues always come and tell me, there were a lot of problems on the parents, you know. We may select uh, Kevin to go to France, but the parents will come to PSC and bank table and say, why are you sending my dear Kevin to France? I want Kevin to go to Imperial College. So it is the kind of uh, mindset and we, I would certainly encourage Sabrina and Kevin, you know, please go and sell more Koyo in uh, junior colleges <laughs> or, and uh, encourage the, the, the JC kids to, to consider France for education. I have actually, to say, uh, oh, sorry. Go ahead, Sylvie. Actually, um, it, it ties in a lot with the risk-taking appetite that Singaporean students may or may not have. So, uh, you know, it's always uh, a bit of a hesitant thing where, oh, you're going to somewhere that doesn't primarily speak English. So no matter even people who have done four years of O-levels uh, at French, um, I mean, doing French, they may not feel prepared for it because this is the very, very typical grammar, you know, like Angle 3 ABC. And then when you get there, people start speaking Argo to you and then you're like, what? So uh, coming back to this risk-taking thing, I did want to ask a chairman a question, which is, do you think that the fact that you took the road not taken at such a young age, just after A-levels, does it uh, change your appetite for taking risk in your professional decisions? No, no, definitely, definitely. Um, I, I was having lunch with three uh, of my pals of the three French scholars yesterday. All of us are already gray-haired. And in fact, they were all asking me, hey, Ellen, are you going to tell them about all the difficult times we had uh, in France, you know, how we got cheated in the buses, how we had to line up to apply for our cut the sejour, and how we were kicked around by the petty civil servants. And I said, I think I better don't do that. I'm in front of the French ambassador. Cannot say too many bad things. I'll tell you more over a, a glass of beer or something. But Indeed, what you said is absolutely true. We had to navigate and, you know, even to see a doctor when, you know, once I had a super bleeding nose, even though I was already in a class preparatoire, but my French was quite hopeless. I couldn't even describe my symptoms, uh, but, but it really made us how to uh, so de brouille, how do you manage yourself? And in fact, up to 10 years ago, the second largest city with 
Singapore French scholars are, guess where? Shanghai. Because people of my generation, one, one of them, Mok Mok, became the chairman of Air Liquid Asia. And uh, another chap is the chief co uh, CEO of Suzhou Industrial Park. So the very fact that we have been uh, trampled in French waters and have this taste of that adventure, going to France, going to Russia, is, it's not a problem, we'll go. So I think that, that actually opened the adventurism of uh, many of the French trained scholars. Thank you, Chairman. Um, we've got a lot of questions coming in, uh, so I hope we can make the time because um, I've got questions buzzing on the on the official Q and A, but I also have uh, questions buzzing on uh, some French alumni WhatsApp group. So I, I hope you're in the mood for answering questions, Chairman. Today, um, <laughs> I have my lunch already. <laughs> <laughs> I think some of us haven't yet. Um, we we have a, a question from uh, from uh, Kelvin Tan. Um, uh, who also studied in France, uh, and he's also in the French Alumni Exco. Uh, he thanks you for, for your stories and personal um, uh, anecdotes. He has an interesting question that kind of goes um, beyond what we've so far discussed. Um, his question is um, uh, more on the personal relationship between um, um, uh, former Prime Minister Lee Kuan Yew and uh, Jacques Chirac. Um, um, he, he's kind of interested to know, since you serve as um, PPS to, to the then um, uh, MM, um, what, what kind of brought them uh, together? Was it, was it personality? Was it uh, timing? Was it common views? Um, and, and I think it was quite, as you said, um, um, former President Jack Chirag was very fundamental in, in kind of uh, some of the things that we are doing on a G2G basis. Any insights on this, uh, Chairman? Well, for every national leader, each has its own peculiarity. I mean, even if you look at our current cabinet members. So Mr. Lee Kuan Yew had this special knack of making friends with people. And when he's asked for a view on certain things, whether it's China trade or you know, Japan emperor's succession problem, he is so well read and so learned that when he speaks, people sit up and pay attention. So, and these are the things that brought them to click. And, uh, you know, there's a Chinese word called tou ji, tan de tou ji. That means you are able to click and develop a friendship. So, I mean, so that's how they, they just found that they had common teams and common interests. Another example will be uh, Mrs. Margaret Thatcher and Mr. Lee Kuan Yew. They were also best of friends. Uh, they, then there was also uh, George Bush, you know, so on and so forth. Uh, Clinton, maybe no, uh, because, you know, our well, famous little fun. So, so it, it, it really depends on the personality of our national leaders, how good they are in making friends. Absolutely. And I think, um, uh, you know, that's one of the reasons I think also um, we in the French alumni believe that, um, you know, our professional lives are not only about doing our, 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 our job. I mean, that's, that's of course, um, imperative and, and um, essential, but it's also about helping others on the journey. Uh, it's about learning also from, from others. Um, you know, so we are, we are totally in line, you know, it's about chemistry and, and personal relationships. Yeah. So we'll take a, a, few, a few more questions um, uh, from, the, from the floor. Um, there is a question from Jason about the Bologna process of 2010, how it affected uh, the French Grandes Ecoles um, with regards to bachelor's and master's equivalency. Um, I can briefly just give a short answer to this because I graduated 2013, so I'm one of the new equivalency people. Uh, I have to say, right, outside of France, Grandes Ecoles are not very recognized. People may know the big ones like Polytechnique, um, and then mean maybe, uh, and but the smaller ones or the more niche ones are not well known. But then with this Bologna process, what happens is that some of these écoles they actually equate diplôme d'ingénieur, which is after five years of study, to the masters. And uh, of course, you have your grades, and it's considered like let's say uh, first class, so on and so forth with honors. So uh, on the international market. 
having, I mean, this process actually benefits the French Grands Écoles because you will have an internationally recognized uh, diploma, a certificate yeah. that allows people to get better job placements, uh, even though whoever is interviewing them or looking at their CV may not have heard of a particular niche école. So I hope that, answer your qu uh, that answers your question. I... Can, can I share an anecdote that I shared with Kelvin uh, the other day when he came to my office? Uh, I used to be director manpower of MINDEF. That means I was the HR chief of the Ministry of Defense. And at that time, uh, Tio Chi Hien, he was a uh, chief of Navy. And we were actually going through the dossier of the naval engineers. And then I happened to see this particular name, who is a French graduate. You know. And uh, he was actually ranked among the top three. So I asked, hey, Chien, this person, X, he came from an echo that is like uh, not very well known. You know? So you, you think he's really good? He said, Alan, he is one of my best. He is superior to many of the engineers from all the name universities uh, in the English speaking world. I said, they said, oh, really? But when I rationalize it myself, well, in my time, we still had English school and Chinese school, you know, English A levels and Chinese A levels. So even for us from the English stream, we were already struggling at the Kong Ku. And what do you think about a Chinese educated? colleague, you know, who, who had to learn English and had to learn French. And so when he took the, the Kongku, I think he almost barely scraped through French and barely scraped through English. And well, maybe he's, and um, so he, he ended up in this not so famous echo, but, and I know of a few, including some of your colleagues in DSO who went to the not so good echo. In fact, I used to kick them when I see that in Paris. Hey, why are you working so hard? And they tell me, hey, Alan, you bunch of idiots, huh? you all got into the good schools. Huh? You all can switch on. We all, because we went into the not so good school, the school wanted to make sure we are able to produce out there in the working world. And they actually work us doubly hard. So whichever school you came from doesn't matter. It, what really matters is your work performance. So I think that is the real lesson for our younger colleagues out there. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you very much. Um, so I think we're, we're kind of almost at the, the end of our allotted time. Um, I really enjoy personally moderating this with, with you, um, uh, Alan. I appreciate um, uh, your off-the-cuff remarks. Um, and uh, I wanted to thank um, Ambassador. Um, thank you very much for, for giving us this opportunity to work with you. Uh, and your team has been a fantastic experience. Um, and I think we're all looking forward to um, phase three so we can do more uh, stuff together, um, you know, in the French way of living, as we say, you know, and then we can, uh, of course, pick up on uh, Chairman's suggestion of consuming more Burgundy and uh, wines from other areas as well. So Ambassador, would you, would you like to uh, perhaps say some uh, closing uh, remarks? Yeah, thank you so much. And uh, it's not closing remarks, but just to express my deep gratitude I mean, to Chairman Alan Shah. And I think it was a wonderful I mean, testimony of uh, what I call the experience of friends, because you convey, I mean, that there were so many other things that's just about learning a, a discipline. Uh, and that this, uh, I mean, was uh, served you, I mean, in your all uh, career. And so I think it was a very interesting point, I mean, that uh, Sylvie made about uh, uh, this uh, experience. I mean, was it useful later on? And, and the fact that you were not risk adverse, but rather uh, ready, I mean, to uh, uh, engage in a challenging environment. And, and um, I think this is very true. Uh, if you uh, go to France, for sure, you will be confronted to difficulties and you will learn how to navigate through this, as uh, Alan Chan said. Uh, it may be not the case in an environment where you feel much more familiar with. I mean, for instance, the US, Canada, or UK, and so on. And so, uh, uh, yes, there is a, 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 not a risk, but a, a challenge, I mean, to, uh, to take. And, and it will be uh, very useful later on. If I can share my own experience, I mean, um, uh, I'm uh, also a product of uh, 
classe préparatoire and so on. But uh, I, I spent two years of my life in Taiwan, exactly at the same age as uh, Alan Chan, I mean, was uh, studying in, in, in France. And I think it's actually the best period in your life, I mean, to expose yourself to a challenging environment uh, because you have not so many constraints and you are very uh, open-minded and, and curious and ready, I mean, to take risks. And, uh, and, and so that's what we do through what we call coopérant. Uh, VIE. Uh, and, and this is not by chance. I mean, it's also because we think it's the best period in life to expose people to a challenging environment. Uh, and so this is why at the French Embassy, we have uh, started uh, two years ago now, what we call France Excellence. It's an, an opportunity for Singaporean students, I mean, to do internship in a Singapore, in a French company, whether based here in Singapore, but it can be also in France or in a, a third country, uh, for a period of time between three to six months, and uh, and so uh, to uh, provide, I mean, Singaporean students with this opportunity, I mean, to uh, try to confront themselves, I mean, to a new environment, which sometimes can be challenging, uh, but it's. Uh, uh, the opportunity also for them to to learn more about a uh, uh, French working uh, uh, environment and and then also I mean to hopefully I mean find a job opportunities in, in the future so we because of the covid uh, we keep uh, this uh, program but mainly with internship here in Singapore in French companies based here in Singapore a great great thank you I mean to uh, all of you, and uh, I think it was a fascinating, I mean, uh, webinar. Thanks to you. Thank you again. Uh, thank Chairman, you. Uh, thank uh, you very much, uh, Chairman uh, Ambassador. Thanks, Alan, and thanks, Kevin, very much. Uh, so, all right, everyone, we have now come to the end of our session today. And on behalf of the organizers, uh, I would like to sincerely thank all of you for joining us. I know there are people watching from Australia, from North America, of course, in Singapore. And uh, I hope that this uh, session has been interesting and informative for you, uh, because I certainly enjoyed very much hearing about Alan's unique experience. So we have planned other lectures uh, with other illustrious Singaporean French alumni uh, who are also looking forward to sharing their experiences with you. So please stay tuned to the website uh, and social media of the French uh, Embassy to find out details of the upcoming lecture. Uh, and I wish you all an amazing weekend ahead. Uh, and I hope to see you next time. So take care and stay safe. And thank you very much again. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye, everybody. Au revoir. Bon weekend.